Good morning. Welcome back, everyone. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. How is everyone today? Today is Tuesday, November 22nd, 2022. It is 9.04 a.m. Eastern here in the United States. And it says it is 41 degrees and sunny here. Sorry, Instagram. You're a little bit off center. And I hope it doesn't show up on... Um, it's not blocking Facebook's view. But how is everyone this morning? Um, well, thank you for asking. And what are we reading today, Allison? Today, for those of you who may not have been with us yesterday, we are up to Galatians chapter 6. And I'm excited. I love this chapter. This chapter is full of verses that a lot of us know. And they're all packed into this one chapter. So I'm excited. I have a lot of um, notes here that I took. So I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to read this out of the Amplified because that's what I've been doing a lot lately. And I actually, I sat here and I got through all four translations this morning. So I've read this good morning. Um, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Let me greet you properly. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to those of you on Facebook. Instagram and YouTube. Um, yes, so as I was saying, I read all four translations this morning. I read the Amplified, the King James, the Message, and the NIV. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to read it to you in its entirety out of the Amplified. Then the scriptures that I wrote down that should be or probably are common to a lot of people, are well known to a lot of people. I'm going to go back and read them in the King James translation because that is how I know them. So that's the wording that will be familiar with a lot of people. I have just a couple of scriptures that are uh, verses rather that I'm going to read to you out of the message because you know the message usually breaks it down for us and makes it extra plain. And um, with all of that, I don't, I'm not going to go back and read any of it out of the NIV. I think between those three translations, it brings home everything that I want to um, highlight for you today. All right. So, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> I did take cough medicine this morning. It just hasn't kicked in. Um, so please, thank you for bearing with me. But you guys know, those of you that have been with me, because we've been doing this over a year, September 1st. 2021 was the first day that I got on, on here with what I thought was going to be just a proverb of the day. But here we are now flowing into our second year. And I'm happy, but you all know that I suffer from year-round allergies. And so I just go from spring allergies through the summer into the fall. And unfortunately, this time of year, the allergies that I have, I have indoor and outdoor allergies as well, causes my sinuses to just never stop and it creates a cough. So thank you for bearing with me. For those of you that are like, that girl is still sick. It does translate over to allergies. Okay. So, um, yes, we're going to pray and then we're going to get into Galatians chapter six because I'm excited. I didn't, I did not realize that all of these verses, well-known verses are packed into this one chapter. So it's pretty exciting. All right, so let's pray and then we're going to get into it. There's a lot going on in the world. Let me just say that. There's also a lot going on in the world. And I hope, you guys know I don't watch TV, but I do keep up with what's going on because the news pops up on my laptop and I see things on social media. Um, there's a lot going on. So pay attention to what's going on. And we really have to pray and ask God for wisdom in how to maneuver and navigate the times. Because we're living in times that we've not seen before. Things are happening that have never happened before. And so um, I just urge everyone to really pay attention to what's going on and what's transpiring. I'm just amazed with everything that's going on and with so many things going on, it's really hard to figure out what, where to focus your time, your energy, and your attention but we really kind of have to pay attention to it all because, like I said, there's just so much going on. 
So we really have to ask God for wisdom. So maybe that's the direction that I'll pray in this morning, asking God for protection, number one, protection, and number two, safety. <coughs> Excuse me, safety. Because there's crazy things going on in terms of um, crime taking place, really crazy stories, you know, and I'm not, I don't want to get into the details of it, but I'm following this one story that I just became aware of maybe like five days ago. Um, and it really has just um, overwhelmed me because it's so diabolical. I guess I'm just going to call it that. It's so diabolical. And so we have to really pray for our children, our grandchildren, pray for ourselves. But um, the crime is out of control, the senselessness of it all. And then, you know, let me just say this. Let me just, before I get into the word, um, when I first became aware of this case, I'm going to call it a case. The first thing that I said was to my children was I said, I felt like there was more to it than what meets the eye, that this was more spiritual, that this was more demonic in nature. And so as I follow up on the story last night, um, a woman who was carrying or talking about the story live on YouTube was saying the same thing. It just seems more demonic and satanic um, than just like a senseless mistake or accident. And so I continue to keep my, my finger on the pulse of this story because we have to pray about the things that are creeping into everyday society um, and that know that the, the spiritual warfare, the, what we're going on and experiencing, that there's a spiritual dimension to a lot of this. And it's easy to just think that a lot of this is just like random, you know, occurrences, but I don't think so. I think we're seeing an escalation in um, the spiritual world. The, the demonic activity, I feel like, is really, it's increasing at an alarming rate and pace. So we have to pray and really ask God for discernment and wisdom, where we should go, who should who we need to be around, who we need to separate from. So let me get into prayer. I'm going to pray in that vein. All right. So Father God, in the name of Jesus, Abba, Father, we just thank you this morning, Lord. Father, we thank you for the gift of another day. We thank you for waking us up this morning, Lord. We thank you that you continue to bless us and keep us, Lord. We thank you for the hedge of protection that is around our lives, Lord. And I ask that as we go throughout our day, our week, our months, and our years, Lord. I pray for us and our bloodline, Lord, that you would cover and shield us from the oldest to the youngest, both our maternal and paternal bloodlines, God. I pray let there be a hedge of protection around us that cannot be broken, cannot be penetrated, and cannot be compromised, oh God. Father, I pray that you will order our steps, thoughts, actions, words, and deeds. Let everything that we do say and be, let it be pleasing in your sight. And Father, this morning, I ask for safety, I ask for wisdom. Lord, I ask that you direct our steps, that you show us where to go, Lord. And Holy Spirit, I pray that you will fine tune our ear to you, O oh God. Father, cause us to be sensitive to the leadings and the guiding that you have for us, Lord, that we will have wisdom of when to stay home and when to move, how to move, O oh God. Father, I pray that you will lead us and guide us around who we should be around and who we need to separate ourselves from, oh God. Father, we're living in crazy times, times that we have never seen before. So Father, we rely on you, oh God. We put our faith, our hope, our trust, and our love in you, oh Lord. And Father, without you, we are nothing, God. We thank you with you. We can do all things, Lord. But Father, we just want to say this morning that we give you glory and the honor that is due to you, oh God. And Father, this morning, I ask for a fresh download of wisdom from your throne into our spirits, oh God. Father, I pray, let us walk in the anointing of the sons of Issachar that we will be able to discern the times and the seasons. Father, that we will ought, that we will know what we ought to do, oh God, that we will be in divine alignment with your perfect and holy will for our lives, oh God. Father, anything that is out of alignment, Father, I pray that you bring us back into divine alignment immediately, oh God. Father, course correct our lives when and where needed, oh God. Let us never stray from the path that you have for us, oh God. But Father, let us always operate in a spirit of love, in a spirit of wisdom, in a spirit of integrity.
integrity, O oh God. Father, let us not fall. Let us not grow weary. Let us not faint, O oh God. But Father, let us run our race that you have set before us. Let us run it, O oh God, with a fresh zeal, O oh God. I pray that you anoint us, Lord. Anoint our spirits, Father. Let us have a gentle spirit, a kind spirit, Lord God. Let us not be mean-spirited. Father, I pray a hedge of protection around our children. Father, shield our children from all of the activity that is going on, Lord. I pray a hedge of protection of a, a, a protection as they go to school, Lord. Release your angels, God. Cause your angels to have charge over our children and our grandchildren, according to your word in Psalm 91. Dispatch your heavenly angels now, O oh God. Send them into the schools. Keep the atmosphere in the schools peaceful and calm, Lord, that our children can learn. They can be successful, Father. Increase their capacity, their desire, and their love for learning, and their desire and their love for the things of God. Father, I pray uh, head, uh, that you will divinely separate all of us from the wrong people, places, and things, oh God. Father, teach us to love what you love and hate what you hate, Lord. Father, I just pray that the wrong people won't even want to be around us, Lord. Let our lights shine, God, that it will deter the wrong people from even wanting to come into our sphere, wherever we are, Lord. Just keep us divinely protected. Help us to keep our mind and our heart and soul Focused on you, Lord. Let us not be taken with material things, material gain, O oh God. But Father, let us have a heart to live upright and holy for you. Father, as I prepare to read your word this morning, Lord, I just yield to you, Holy Spirit. And I say, have your way. Do what you want to do. Use me how you want to use me. Say what you want to say, O oh God. Holy Spirit, I just ask, God, that you just flow through me. Lord, I pray that as I read your word, it will bless your people, O oh God. Cause us to receive the word with a pure heart, O oh God. Open up our ears to hear that we will hear from you with clarity and precision, Lord. Let us not be confused, O oh God. But today, let today be a turning point in our lives, Lord, that everything will change to get to around and it will all work together for our good, Lord. Father, I thank you for what you're doing. And as I forget, again, as I prepare to read your word, I pray that you bless it. Let it minister to each and every person that watches it live and on the replay play, O oh Lord. And Father, I just ask again that people will see a difference in us, Lord, that they will want to know what it is about us that is different, Lord, that we can testify that we will be a good representative for you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. All right, so good morning. Good morning to everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. All right, again, so we're into Galatians chapter six this morning, and I'm just going to jump right in this. I'm, oh, it's 917. I'm running late. This is a power-packed um, chapter. I'm very excited about it. I'm happy. Good morning, Kimberly. I'm happy to read it. We're going to read it in the Amplify. I'm going to follow it up with the King James. Some of the, um, the verses that I have in my notes, I have a couple of verses that we're going to read out of the message. And then we're going to go on and have a blessed day. All right. But I got I to hurry up because I didn't mean to chit chat this long. All right. But things are going on. And we have to be aware. You know? We have to be aware. Things are really going on. They're speeding up. Time is speeding up. Things are escalating. The world is changing. And so we have to be aware. And we have to ask God to order our steps and um, give us clarity about what's going on and help us to connect the dots. Because there are dots that need to be connected. Everything that's going on is not. They're all not separate issues. And we have to be aware of that. So we need to ask God to give us the revelation and the wisdom on how to connect the dots. And then once we connect the dots, we need to know how to position ourselves. We need to know what we ought to do. All right. So let's get into the word. The word of God this morning. Galatians chapter 6, Amplified Translation. Bear one another's burdens. Brothers, if anyone is caught in any sin, you who are spiritual, that is you who are responsive to the guidance of the spirit, are to restore such a person person in a spirit of gentleness, not with a sense of superiority and self-righteousness, keeping a watchful eye on yourself so that you are not tempted as well. 
Carry one another's burdens in this way. You will fulfill the requirements of the law of Christ. That is the law of Christian love. Verse three, for if anyone thinks he is something special, when in fact he is nothing special except in his own eyes, he deceives himself. But each one must carefully scrutinize his own work, examining his actions, attitudes, and behavior. And then he can have the personal satisfaction and inner joy of doing something commendable without comparing himself to another. But every person will have to bear with patience his own burden of faults and shortcomings for which he alone is responsible. The one who was taught the word of God is to share all good things with his teacher, contributing to his spiritual and material support. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. This is verse seven. He will not allow himself to be ridiculed, nor treat it with contempt, nor allow his precepts to be scornfully set aside for whatever a man sows. This and only this is what he will reap. For the one who sows to his flesh, his sinful capacity, his worldliness, his disgraceful impulses will reap from the flesh ruin and destruction. But the one who sows to the spirit will from the spirit reap eternal life. Let us not grow weary or become discouraged in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap if we do not give in or give up. I'd like to say give up. So then, while we as individual believers have the opportunity, let us do good to all people, not only being helpful, but also doing that which promotes their spiritual well-being and especially be a blessing to those of the household of faith, the born again believers. See with what large letters I am writing to you with my own hand. Those who want to make a good impression in public before the Jews try to compel you to be circumcised just so they will escape being persecuted for faithfulness to the cross of Christ. But even the circumcised Jews themselves do not really keep the law, but they want to have you circumcised so that they may boast in your flesh. That is in the fact that they convinced you to be circumcised. But far be it for me to boast in anything or anyone except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. But neither is circumcision anything of importance, nor uncircumcision, but only a new creation, which is the result of a new birth, a spiritual transformation, a new nature in Christ Jesus. Peace and mercy be upon all who walk by this rule, who discipline themselves and conduct their lives by this principle, and upon the true Israel of God, Jewish believers. From now on, let no one trouble me by making it necessary for me to justify my authority as an apostle and the absolute truth of the gospel. For I bear on my body the branding marks of Jesus, the wounds, scars, and outward evidence of persecutions. These testify to his ownership of me. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, my brothers and sisters. Amen. And I'll add a second amen to that. Now, I'm going to go back and read the verses that um, are very familiar to a lot of us. <coughs> Excuse me. And verse one, this is not um, what I'm going to call like a common or familiar verse, but I happen to like this. I think this is important. Verse one, here in the Amplified. Brothers, if anyone is caught in any sin, you who are spiritual, that is you who are responsive to the guidance of the spirit, are to restore such a person in a spirit of gentleness, not with a sense of superiority, or self-righteousness. Now let me read this to you out of the message. It says, If someone falls into sin, forgivingly restore him, saving your critical comments for yourself. You might be needing forgiveness before the day is out. Stoop down and <coughs> excuse me, stoop down and reach out to those who are oppressed. Share their burdens so 
and so complete Christ's law. If you think you're too good for that, you're badly deceived. Now, I love this because it's so easy for us to point the finger at what somebody else is doing wrong and then pass judgment. And then sometimes when people want to bring correction or they feel that they're being correct, they're correcting the person, right? They don't do it with a spirit of love. They do it sometimes with a mean spirit, a critical spirit, and it's not really coming from a place of love. It's not really coming from the right place, with the right motive, with the right spirit. You could be condescending with it, insulting, offensive. And so this is reminding us that if someone falls into sin, forgivingly restore them. Show mercy. Show grace. The same mercy, mercy and grace that you want somebody to show you at a time in your weakness where you fall, show that to them. Because it says you might be needing forgiveness before the day is out. Right? So true. We don't know at any minute. Right? Something could happen and we mess up. And so we want grace and mercy extended to us, kindness extended to us. So it's telling us extend it to other people. Okay. Verse 3. For if anyone thinks he is something special, when in fact he is nothing special except in his own eyes, he deceives himself. So what do I hear? Don't think more highly of yourself than you ought again. Right? Don't think you've arrived because we're all works in progress. We still have more to do. We have more knowledge to gain. Right? God is not done with us yet. So is telling us, don't think more highly of yourself than you ought. Let's see what the King James says. For if a man thinketh, think, I'm sorry, for if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. All right. Verse four. But each one must carefully scrutinize his own work, examining his actions, his attitudes, and his behavior. And then... He can carefully screw, um, and then he can have the personal satisfaction and inner joy of doing something commendable without comparing himself to others. So I wrote down, judge yourself. So let's see what the King James says in verse four. But let every man prove his own work. And then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. Self-assessment. Right. Then I have verse five here for every person will have to bear with patience his own burden of fault and shortcomings for which he alone is responsible. So don't always try to blame people when you mess up. Take accountability, take responsibility, own your mistakes. We all mess up. So don't try to pass it off on somebody else when you know it was really just your flesh, right? Own it. Own our fault. It says, for every man shall bear his own burden. I wrote that in my notes. Carry your own load. Right? And with that, pay attention to what you're doing. Walk your walk. Don't always try to monitor somebody else's walk and judge somebody else's walk. Their calling, their assignment, their journey, their path in life is different. <coughs> Excuse me, it's different from yours. Right? We don't know what God spoke to somebody else in their prayer closet, in their private time. So what gives us the right to judge what somebody else is doing if they're not doing what we feel they should do and how they should do it? We don't know. It's not for us to say that God did not give them directions to do it a different way, do something new, right? But it's so easy to look at other people and judge what they're doing because we get set in our ways and then we think that our way is the right way. Our way is the only way. It doesn't make sense to us. Well, sometimes it doesn't make sense to us because God didn't give us the revelation for that task because it's not our task. 
So we have to worry about what God told us to do and then do that with the spirit of excellence. Okay. Verse six. The one who is taught the word of God is to share all good things with his teacher, contributing to his spiritual spiritual and material support. So what I'm hearing here is what we read earlier about sowing financially, giving back into the person who is teaching you the word of God, right? So sow into your pastor, sow into the shepherd, whoever is teaching you the word of God, give back, contribute, support them, right? Let's see here. <laughs> okay, I'm going to read this out of the message. <clears throat> Be very sure now, you who have been trained to a self-sufficient maturity, that you enter into a generous common life with those who have trained you, sharing all the good things that you have and experience. Seven and eight. Here's a common verse. Here are common verses, two common verses. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. He will not allow himself to be ridiculed, nor treat it with contempt, nor allow his precepts to be scornfully set aside. For whatever a man sows, this and only this will he reap. For the one who sows to his flesh, his sinful capacity, his worldliness, his disgraceful impulses will reap from the flesh ruin and destruction. But the one who sows to the spirit will reap from the spirit eternal life. Now, I wanted to read this out of... Um, I'll read it out of the King James and the message. So those were verses seven, eight, and nine. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. That's verse seven. Verse eight. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Nine, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Hold the line. Don't give up. Don't quit prematurely. And it's easier said than done because sometimes we get tired. We feel like we're putting in the effort. We watch other people around us be blessed right? We feel like they're getting miracle signs, wonders, and breakthroughs. And we ask God, when is it going to be my turn? God, I'm faithful. I read the word. I love you. I pray. I sow my tithes. I pay my offerings. I'm doing everything that I know how to do in the natural. But God, it just seems like I'm not being blessed. I'm not seeing the blessing, the benefit, but I'm watching everybody around me. Everybody's getting married. Everybody's having babies. Everybody's getting new jobs, new houses, new cars, God, but I'm still in the same place. Do you hear me, God? Where are you? Right? Don't give up. Hold the line. Here we go in the message. Don't be misled. No one makes a fool of God. What a person plants, he will harvest the law of sowing and reaping. The person who plants selfishness, ignoring the needs of others, ignoring God, harvests a crop of weeds. All he'll have to show for his life is weeds. But the one who plants in response to God, letting God's spirit do the growth work. I love this. Letting God's spirit do the growth work growth work in him harvests a crop of real life eternal life let god do a work in you letting god's spirit do the growth work that might not be easy either right when god has to stretch us to get us to another level when he allows us to go through things, to teach us patience, to increase our level of faith, right? And this is why you'll hear people say, you got to be careful what you ask for, what you pray for, 
Because in order for God to release it, he might have to take you through some things. How can God teach you patience if you are never put in a situation that's going to test and try your patience for you to have to walk out and exhibit patience? Right? Make sense? Just like the gym. How can I, if I want to build up, increase my muscle mass, how can I increase my muscle mass if I don't put in the work, if I don't go to the gym and lift the weights? I can't build the muscle if I don't want to do the work. It's a process. It's a journey. It takes going through something. It takes sacrificing the time and going to the gym and doing the work. So when God has to do a work in us, he has to allow us to go through things, right? There's no testimony if there's no test. How can you say for yourself that you know, that you know, that you know that God is a healer? If, if <coughs> excuse me, you yourself has, have never been sick or somebody in your family or somebody, you know, close to you has been sick and God has raised them up. Where's your testimony if you've never seen it? Right? It's one thing to always say that God is a healer because you read it in the book. You know, you read it in the Bible. You read these stories we know of all the acts of healing that took place, right? And we can have a certain level of faith from reading it, right? Because we believe the word of God. I believe the word of God. I believe the Bible from Genesis to the book of Revelation. I believe the Bible from beginning to end. So I believe it. It's another level of faith having gone through meningitis, having been quarantined in the hospital for four days and having been raised up out of my sick bed to know that God is a healer. My faith for healing is on another level. Because I walked it out, I watched God do it, right? As I laid in the hospital by myself and nobody could come in and visit. It was me and God, right? Took my faith to another level. Now I have a testimony. Yes? Makes sense? All right. Verse 9. Okay, amplified. Let us not grow weary or become discouraged in doing good. For at the proper time we will reap if we do not give in. Or like I said, give up. Don't quit the race prematurely. So then, while we as individual believers have the opportunity, let us do good to all people. Not only being helpful, but also doing that which promotes their spiritual well-being. And especially being a blessing to those of the household of faith, born again believers. God is so good. He is good, Kimberly. But I'm telling you, it's the times of testing that grow us. It's, that's the growth work the word, word, the word is talking about. If everything was just given to us, if everything just was always right, You know, I can testify on a whole nother level about different things because I lived it. I walked through it. God is a healer. God is a restorer. God is faithful. All right. King James, verse nine. And let us not be weary in well-doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. I didn't have this in the message but let us, let me read this. So let's not allow ourselves to get fatigued doing good. At the right time, we will harvest a good crop if we don't give up or quit. Right now, therefore, every time we get the chance, let us work for the benefit of all, starting with the people closest to us in the community of faith. Let us not allow ourselves to get fatigued in doing good. Because when you get fatigued, what happens? You want to give up. You want to quit. You want to take a break. You want to rest. You want to stop. Catch your breath. Take a nap. We thank, I thank him for my growth and my test. Yes, Kimberly, that's so important, right? 
I can sit here now. It sounds crazy, but I can sit here and say, thank God that I went through that episode of having meningitis. Thank God. Because now I can say, I know that I know that I know God is a healer. God is a restorer. God is faithful. I can say that with a total different level of faith. Right? He never leaves us nor forsakes us. He really doesn't. You know? It might feel like he's quiet. But um, he's always working. He's always working. Even in your rough season, in your season of, of testing, of trying, know that there's a purpose. There's a purpose for the storms that we go through. We, don't, we can't always make sense of it. We don't see it. Right? But then sometimes down the low down down the road, later down the road, we see what God was doing, or we see the level of growth, we see the wisdom, the knowledge, the experience that we got through our season of testing. When we feel like we're stuck in the wilderness by ourselves, we don't understand. When God separates us, when God allows people to walk out of our lives and we are hurt that the person left. But really, sometimes God has to separate us because we can make people the center of our attention and allow them to draw us away from the things of God. And now we've put so much time and energy and effort into entertaining people or a person, right? That now we're distracted. Our focus is off of God. Okay, so now where's your prayer time? Your prayer time has now diminished because you're on the phone or you're out socializing with this person or people. Activities, whatever it is, is drawing you away, right? Cutting into your time. And then God says, "Uh, uh, uh-uh-uh, I got work for you to do. You have an assignment here. And this person, if I allow them to stay in your life, they're going to derail derail the purpose and assignment that I have for you to do. You know, one of the hardest things or not hard, one of the, I guess I say, I want to use the word like conviction, Kimberly. When I feel convicted, is when I hear people, and I just heard it like two days ago. I shared it to my Facebook page. I don't know whether I made it public or not. But when people say there are other people, at- 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 there are other people tied to your purpose in your assignment, and so when we don't do what God has called us to do, when He has called us to do it, we're delaying somebody else. Somebody else is now behind schedule because we're behind schedule. And every time I hear that, I get so convicted. You know? And then I'm like, I better pick up the pace. I better do what I... I, And that's why I don't want to come off of here. Because I never know what day God is going to orchestrate somebody to be on here, to hear what he has to say, to glean something from his word that day, something that is going to comfort them, something that is going to give them direction. So if I don't show up, not it's not Allison, right? I'm not saying Allison. I'm not saying look at Allison. I'm talking about assignments and purpose. But if God said, go on here and read this word, read my word, Because there are people that need to hear it. And you know, as I was um, in prayer this morning with my prayer partner, she said something and it struck me. Because she said, Lord, send those people who can't read to her page. People that don't know how to read. You know, it. For those of us that have been reading since first or second grade, that's not something that we always think about. That there are people, thank you, 
Girl, you Kimberly, I've not I didn't mean to call you girl. Kimberly, I've not cried on here for for forever, but I could really cry right now. She prayed, she said, Lord, send people who can't read. And I said, My God, that's true. Because this is not just in the United States. And there are people in the United States that can't read, but there are people all over the world that can't read. Right? People who are blind who can't open the Bible and read. And she prayed, let them come across this page that they could hear your word. And I said, my God, I can't be off my assignment. I can't be out of order. I can't fall short because there's somebody, God, who can only read or hear your word. If you send them to this page because they can't read or they are blind. So it's so important that we don't come up off of what God has called us to do. So every time I hear people say, when you are off course, when you are out of alignment, when you are behind God's timing and you're not fulfilling what God has called you to do, you're delaying somebody else. take that seriously that's a great responsibility to know thank you for following me um to know that you somebody might need to hear this today right so let's just start at verse one if someone falls into sin forgivingly restore him save your critical comments for yourself this this word might stop somebody from killing somebody's spirit today or destroying somebody's spirit from tearing them down because you saw somebody messed up and now you want to step in with your critical attitude and instead of bringing correction out of a spirit of love, you want to destroy them and then cause them to fall away from the faith. What if that was the assignment for me being on here reading today that this will bring correction for somebody and that if this will remind them I can't I can't rebuke people from an evil place with a mean spirit. I have to I have to bring correction gently with the spirit of love. Cuz listen to it. It says you might be needing forgiveness before the day is out. How dare we? How dare we? Sometimes be so critical and judgmental that we tear people down, not realizing that it's only but for the grace of God. You know, how dare we? I told you I've been that person. I've been judgmental in my life. I look at things and they don't make sense to me. Or maybe it really is out of order, right? Maybe the, the person really was out of order. But. There's a way to correct people. You don't correct people out of a spirit of arrogance. You correct people from a place of love where they can receive it. And they can say, thank you for bringing my attention to it. Because sometimes we mess up and we don't even realize it. We don't, right? Sometimes we're just a product of our environment. Sometimes we, we speak with a sharp tongue because we were raised in a household where everybody spoke like that. So it's common to us. We don't even realize that we're doing it. We don't mean to do it. It comes naturally because we were raised in an environment like that. But it's not okay to then hurt, hurt, hurt other people's feelings and use that as an excuse. It's a level of maturity that we have to reach when we realize, you know what? Yeah, everybody in my family is like that, but that doesn't make it right. The cycle stops here. It stops with me. I have to do better, right? Oh my goodness, I didn't even know this was going to go. Here, this chapter is so rich from the first verse to the last. I just enjoyed this chapter today. Everything is packed in here. So many verses that we know. This is such a good, 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 good teaching and reminder for us um i didn't know i was gonna be in here on here crying this morning kimberly i really didn't but i don't mind because you know that's what i always this is what i've, I've said this but there's so many new people and new platforms on here um but that's how i know when i'm when the holy spirit is dealing with me with allison when the tears flow 
right? So I don't mind. I'll come on here and cry. I'm not, I'm not too big for it. Right. And this, this is what it says. If you think you are too good for that, you are badly deceived. If I think I'm too good to come on here and shed tears, I am badly deceived. So I don't mind. I don't mind. You know, it's unexpected. I don't mind. If it blesses somebody else, I don't mind. If it heals somebody else, I don't mind. I don't mind. It's not too much to ask for me to do that. If it makes me relatable for somebody else, if somebody else can watch and be blessed, I don't mind. For God, I don't mind. I cry on here tomorrow. I cry on here every day, you know, going forward. If that's what if that's what it takes for me to fulfill my assignment and my purpose in this season, I'll do it. God, yes. Yes to your will, God. Yes to your way. I'm a yes. Sign me up. I'm a yes. I'm a yes. And with this, these are not tears of, um, you know, sad tears. These are happy tears. This is just how God speaks to me. This is how I know that I'm on the right path and I'm on the right track. And I'm here for it. Excuse me. I'm here for it. You know? So anyway, thank you so much. I am super duper late. But um, to God be the glory. That's what I say. To God be the glory. You know, use me, Lord. I can't pray and say, God, use me how you want to use me, right? Flow through me. Say what you want to say. Do what you want to do. And I mean that. Use my life for your glory. Show me your glory, God, in greater measure. So when he shows up and do things like that, I, this, I can't be mad at that. I just prayed for that to happen. I just asked God to use me. I just asked for that. You know? So with that, Kimberly, my friend, I say everyone have a wonderful day and thank you for watching, whether you watched live or whether you watched the replay. Do click like, please, as I try to grow my audience, do please click like those of you um, who can or will, please, you know, I didn't keep a tissue here, I usually, I tried to get smart and keep a bottle of water and tissues here nearby, but I didn't keep tissues nearby today. Um, yes, so let me just say this quickly. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube now. As of three weeks ago, I just created my YouTube channel. It's under my name, Alison Vaughn. Please do go subscribe because I am trying to grow YouTube and reach more people for the glory of God. And um, I'm trying to be obedient. God said, speak louder. That was the word of the Lord to me um, earlier this year. Not speak louder in volume, speak louder in reach. I am trying to really be diligent and obedient to the assignment that God has for me. He said, speak louder. So I spoke louder by starting a new platform. All right. So please, YouTube, the channel is just my name, Allison Vaughn. Please do check it out. Go subscribe. You don't have to turn the notifications on. You don't have to be bothered with all of that. But just please do subscribe. It will help with the algorithm and things like that. Check out. Check it out. Um, I'm trying to do it in the spirit of excellence. Please. Um, and I, I hate doing this, but you really kind of have to do. Please remember to click like, share. Um, and help me get the word out. All right. I hope this blessed um, you all today. And we'll be back tomorrow and see what God is going to do. All right. Thank you. Kimberly, have a wonderful day. Blessings. And thank you so much for always supporting me because you always support me. And so I just publicly like to say thank you. And I appreciate it. I acknowledge it and I recognize it. And I pray a blessing upon you and your household. May God meet all of your needs and bless you abundantly. All right, y'all. I have to go. So I will see you tomorrow morning. All right. Bye. Thank you for tuning in. Bye bye. Bye, Kimberly. Have a wonderful day.